cardiobites. What do the current guidelines recommend for the treatment of heart failure with preserved ejection fraction or HFPEF? There are two recent U.S. guidelines for the management of HFPEF. They are the 2022 ACC, AHA, and HFSA guideline for the management of heart failure, a report of the ACC, AHA Joint Committee on Clinical Practice Guidelines, and the 2023 ACC Expert Consensus Decision Pathway on Management of Heart Failure with Preserved Ejection Fraction. The management of HFPEF should focus on risk stratification and management of comorbidities, non-pharmacological interventions, and symptom and disease-modifying therapies. These are the most common comorbidities associated with HFPEF. Physical inactivity and obesity are associated with worsening health status and HFPEF. Lifestyle intervention should include calorie restriction when appropriate and a regular exercise program. Studies show that enrollment in a structured exercise program improves the quality of life and functional capacity in HFPEF, though this is not currently covered by insurance in the U.S. Sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitors significantly reduce risk of hospitalization for heart failure and cardiovascular death across all ejection fraction subgroups. Mineralocorticoid antagonists can provide balanced diuresis with sequential nephron blockade, control hypertension, and reduce risk of heart failure hospitalizations. The angiotensin receptor neprilysin inhibitors, Sacubitor valsartan, can also reduce the risk of heart failure hospitalizations. Angiotensin receptor blockers may be considered when an RNA is contraindicated. However, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors should not be considered as an alternative. Beta blockers are not universally indicated in HFPEF and may be poorly tolerated due to chronotropic incompetence. In summary, it is important to treat comorbidities and follow a healthy lifestyle. All patients with HFPEF should be treated with an SGLT2 inhibitor. The initiation of an SGLT2 inhibitor may be considered in either ambulatory or during heart failure hospitalization. RNA and MRA should be considered as well, especially if needed for control of hypertension. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of CardioBytes, brought to you by the Heart Failure Society of America. Support for this program was provided by an independent grant from Novo Nordisk. Novo Nordisk did not review this content. I'm Dr. Amin Yahya. I'm an advanced heart failure and heart transplant cardiologist at Sintera Healthcare and Associate Professor of Medicine at Eastern Virginia Medical School. Please complete this short survey to help us identify more programs that may be of interest to you.